I am resurrection and I am life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. San Luis Obispo, California. I'm the Reverend Ian Dellinger, the rector here, and I want to welcome you here to St. Stephen's and to say thank you very much for being here to support Elizabeth and Fred Jr. and the family, and to remember your friend, Pete. And also thank you very much for uh, following our COVID protocols with masks and distancing and our curious seating arrangement. But I think we... <laughs> I think we are all used to that by now. So let us have a moment as we feel the presence of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Peter, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy, in fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 23, which is printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take to you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus says this to the disciples shortly after the Last Supper, when he had predicted both his betrayal and his death. As you can imagine, the disciples were confused, as Thomas illustrates when he begins to ask Jesus, what are you talking about? This confusion that the disciples had when Jesus predicted his own death is similar to the confusion many people have when someone they love dies. Pete was 92 years old when he died. He lived a very full life, but you who loved him still wonder, where has he gone? What happens now? And will I see him again? Some of you may ver be very clear on these questions, and some of you not so clear. But what we heard from Jesus in the gospel, Pete has gone to that place that Jesus has prepared for him. The Christian view of death is that it is not the end, that we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. We are here today to commend Pete's soul to God again, his body was committed to the ground in July on Lopez Island. 
from a ceremonial perspective, he's well covered. <laughs> and we believe that his physical absence does not mean that he is gone forever. Immediately before Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, he says, where I am going, you cannot come. Yet here he says, I go to prepare a place for you. That is precisely where we should focus our thoughts and prayers for Pete this morning. Jesus has prepared a place for Pete, but it is not yet our time or your time to be in that place with Pete. Where Pete is cannot be observed or determined, but who Pete was is something that all of you together know a bit of. Pete was the same person, but man manifested himself slightly differently to each of you. It would take all of your experiences of Pete to describe the whole of Pete, and it would still be incomplete. But his daughter Phyllis will share with you the Pete he, she knew and loved. Phyllis. Bear with me, the light is little. <clears throat> The many faces of Pete Potter. First, he was a man of several names. Baptized Eliphalet, not Potter III, he chose to go by Pete at an early age. I used to be confused when I brought in the mail and there would be letters addressed to Mr. E. N. Potter Peter, not Potter, and just Pete Potter. Which was he? Over the years, I came to realize that Papa was actually many people. He was a Victorian gentleman, a jack of all trades, a wanderer, and a prankster, to name a few. Pete, the Victorian gentleman. Papa liked a well-ordered life in a well-ordered world. Everything and everyone had their place. I remember watching Mary Poppins when it first came out and thinking, my Papa is just like that father, strict, proper, expecting obedience in, and everything to be perfect. You know, my slipper, sherry, and pipe are due at 6.02. Consistent is the life I lead. Everyone in his life knew he liked a schedule, including his dogs. <laughs> Coffee and cards at 11 and 4, the news at 6, and so forth. Change was anathema in most areas of his life, especially regarding church and his schedule. The two things he didn't seem to mind changing were houses and what he did throughout his life. Pete, the jack of all trades. Though I was far too young to remember this, I know that Papa worked for the LA County Sheriff Hollywood Division, in vice and underworld crime for the first few years of my life. When I was three, uh, my continued bouts with bronchial pneumonia forced a move to the San Bernardino Mountains, where he ran a hardware store and an ambulance service. He then worked for alcohol, tobacco, and firearms for a couple of years before buying a radio station in Santa Barbara. During the years we lived in Santa Barbara, he also headed up personnel and finance for the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department. He got his realtor's license and grew avocados for Calavo. These are only the ones that he, jobs he got paid for. Papa was an avid boater, something he passed on to both my sister and my brother. He was a ham radio operator from an early age. He loved guns and marksmanship trials. He restored old houses and remodeled others. 
He helped me build my house, doing all the electrical work and assisting in the framing. Papa even or owned a commercial cave in the California gold country because caves fascinated him. And I suspect because it gave a chance for him to exercise his jaguar and let it stretch its legs on the open stretches of I-5. Pete the Wanderer. Papa loved to travel. In the late 40s and early 50s, he went out on safari in Kenya. And so our house was filled with exotic trophies including the lion that Papa shot when it came into camp and snatched one of the native bearers. He spent time in Egypt and, like a proper Victorian, brought home many artifacts. In a succession of motorhomes and trailers, the family toured all the national parks in the western U.S. We cruised to Alaska and the Caribbean. And, of course, with Elizabeth, they cruised the world quite literally. There were favorite destinations, for sure. Alaska and the Panama Canal. How many times? <laughs> but pretty much, if a cruise ship could get there, so did they. And yet, it wasn't always the destination that mattered to Papa. He loved those long days at sea, simply being on the water. And, of course, the opportunity of showing off his beautiful wife. But for Papa, wandering also included from house to house. Each potential new house or location was bound to be an improvement over the one we currently lived in. For many years, we moved a lot. 11 times by the time I was 12. To be exact, his time went by. He found locations he loved, Lopez Island and the California Central Coast, so he simply moved houses within those same locations. In later years, he moved less, but was always looking for the next best house. In my father's house, there are many mansions, was written for Papa. <laughs> the prankster. The rather quiet, often stern in repose and very proper man that many knew as Peter Potter also had a wicked sense of humor. He was mischievous. The solemn child who barely spoke was also the mastermind who sat, sat angelically in his boarding school's morning chapel session while the timed charge that he had set previously blew up the hill beside the chapel. <laughs> I was probably six or so when I had a friend stay for a sleepover. Against parental advice, we were watching The Mummy on television. When we heard a noise down in the basement, then it started up the stairs. Thump, drag, thump, drag, thump. Soon, the basement door creaked open, and a figure, bandage-wrapped from head to toe, limped into the room. At which point, two little girls ran screaming out of the room and had to change their soiled pajamas. <laughs> Vacations, or variations on this theme accrued, occurred throughout my childhood. Realistic bear growls, out, you know, just outside during camp outs and that sort of thing were a favorite of his. So, in short, 
These are just a few of the many faces of Peter Potter. My sister and brother could tell of several others, both as their father and also as a grandfather to their children. Elizabeth could share innumerable stories of her multifaceted husband of 30 years. And I imagine each and every one of you have a slightly different Peter Potter that you knew. So I hope we all take the opportunity when we see each other to share a few of our stories. And so he will continue to live in our minds and hearts. Thank you all for being some part of his life and his story. Thank you, Phyllis. And you can share your stories of the Pete you knew at the reception after the service. At 92 years old, Pete was a child of God. He is now with God in that place that Jesus has prepared for him, and we pray that he is with others, the, with others he has loved who, and who died before him. He leaves behind children, grandchildren, and many great-grandchildren, the next of whom is to arrive any time now. Is that correct? Great. All of them will continue to share their memories of Pete today and throughout the years to come. That is further evidence that death is not the end and that Pete is not only loved by God, but loved by you. There is a poem that is a good complement to the gospel reading. We infer from the gospel that, from Jesus' perspective, a place has been prepared for Pete. We are here to commend Pete to that place in prayer and hope that Pete is with Jesus, the saints, and the angels. And that is why we are not to let our hearts be troubled that Pete is no longer here in his physical body. We know that his spirit lives on wherever that may be, and also his spirit lives on in your hearts. So this poem entitled, I Am Free, by an anonymous author, is perhaps the complement of Jesus' perspective from Pete's perspective. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following paths God made for me. I took his hand, I heard him call, then turned and bid farewell to all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to sing, to play. Task left undone must stay that way. I found my peace at close of play. And if my parting left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened deep with sorrow. I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wants me now. He set me free. Jesus has prepared a place for Pete, and we are to commend Pete to that place in prayer and hope that Pete is with Jesus, the saints, and the angels. We know that his spirit lives on wherever that may be, and also his spirit lives on in your hearts. Amen.
Let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and it sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The response to each petition is Amen. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant, we beseech thee, to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy light and thy peace. Amen. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin, and that the newness of life and that the strength of the, and that they pass through the grave and the gate of death, we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who yet walk by faith, that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Amen. Amen. Grant to the faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Amen. Amen. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence that in thy fatherly care that catering, casting us their grief on thee, they may know the a consolation of thy love. Amen. Amen. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope. 
in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. Amen. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Peter to thy never-failing love. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, and remember him according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people. Amen. Amen. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. Grant us, with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory, and with all thy saints, to receive the crown of life which thou dost promise all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you for being here today. And before our final hymn and the commendation, just to let you know about the reception that will take place out in the courtyard. We have a Pied Piper whose uh, sound you should follow to go to the reception. And you'll come out, um, starting with the family, come out this way and go to your left. There's a door over here that you can't see on your left and you'll go out the door and then immediately to your right and snake around to the reception and you will hear the wonderful tones of the, the piper who you are to follow. Um, so let us sing our final hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Peter. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant at Peter, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May this his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everla everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good to see you. Yeah.